this fills up the whole stairwell. That's the tower. Wow, let's go up there. Okay. I can't believe that, yeah, I get to live here. And it's already getting late in the summer. Um, I guess fall now, technically. But there's just like oceans of like yellow flowers earlier in the year, which is really beautiful. Tyson. Hi Tyson. Tyson. <laughs> he has the funniest meow. Yeah, there's some really good ones down here. This one is really cool. It just goes by the seasons. I I like to remember to have an open heart every single day. So I got this at an herbal conference um, in West Virginia. Queen of the flowers elixir. Yes. Is that uh, derived from rose? Please? Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at me taking yes. that guess. Mm -hmm. So rose is really good for the heart. Is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, so I take a couple drops of this a day and just remember to have an open heart throughout the day. It's very rose hydras all on. Um, there's some different... Uh, here's calendula oil. I just use that for moisturizer. Um, I think it's really calming. Mm-hmm. Just using herbal oils in general. Um, here's a good one. So this is Echinacea, and this is from um, Oregon, actually. Herb Farm is a company out in Oregon, and they offer internships three times a year. And I actually have a friend out there we're doing an internship at Herb Farm. But this, it's really cool because if you get, like, stung, like, bit by a snake or, like, stung by a spider or something, you can put it, like, topically on that area where you were bit or stung um, and then also take it internally and it helps like slow the venom. I would like to be a clinical herbalist um, one day. I definitely intend to go to school for that in the future. Um, it all started like so I started studying like plants and getting more into like the spiritual witchy tradition um, probably but it was like two or three years ago and like I actually well Yes, yeah, so I guess I've been more focused on that for the past two or three years. Um, I was actually in a mushroom store in Asheville, North Carolina, and there were these tinctures sitting there. It was um, I a cordyceps tincture. And I was like, oh, what's a tincture? Uh, and the lady who was working there, she started telling me, oh, it's like, um, it's a way to ingest, like, medicinal herbs. Um, and what it is, it's like when alcohol is extracting the medicinal constituents um, from the plant, but so we started going into that and then she started telling me uh, about this herbalist named Rosemary Gladstar and Rosemary Gladstar she's just a very famous herbalist she has a lot of books that are like very accessible to everyone um, and then beyond that so I've been studying that for the past couple years just like with books and then I actually did an internship at United Plant Savers this past spring um, and that was like very formative. What are these flowers? I don't know. I think helianthus, which is like a sunflower, but I'm not positive. <laughs> Whatever they are, they're pretty. Amazing. They're beautiful. Yeah, I'm glad we get these last glimpses of sunlight before winter is upon us. Like I'm lecturing. From my understanding, witchcraft is a, a science, basically, that um, has been sort of uh, made into propaganda to mm -hmm. uh, demonize independent women in the past. Uh, usually women, but it could be either, either, either gender, but usually women. And um, those who have been misunderstood, who did not f conform to the, um, the, the structure of the, of the church, which was the dominant force in Western civilization, um, became labeled as witches, mm -hmm. and and we're, and you know it's been it's been hijacked by popular culture to be this sort of grotesque, uh, grotesque you know Halloween thing, Rosemary's Baby, uh, demon devil worship, you know human sacrifices kind of thing. When in actuality, I, f I feel like the, 
the source of the term and the ideas is more about being um, more connected with nature. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's the, the reason that works is because we live in a society where in the Christian um, patriarchy, nature itself has been demonized. So j- just by association, being wanting to become one with nature um, in the past has made one seem as if you're joining forces with the beasts, the devil, uh, evil wolves, evil sharks, evil snakes, scorpions, mm-hmm. spiders. That's why uh, people have this urge to kill every one of them. Anything that allows us genuine freedom um, and sovereignty has been like people are literally like burned at the stake for it um, because there needs to be control and when you can make your own medicine and forage your own food um, and harness the energy of the universe for whatever you I don't want to say for whatever you need but just to help you move in the direction that you are supposed to be moving then someone has a big problem with that because then they're not the one telling you what to do. And that's connected unfortunately with uh, consumerist culture Oh yes. that has been becoming more of a systematic um, asphyxiation <laughs> on humanity that we are no longer able to do all those things that you said we can only buy our way towards happiness mm-hmm. uh, and buy buy out purchase products to um, make us survive help us survive to the point that we are so dependent on them and the consumerist structures that we cannot live without we, we are we are no longer able to survive without money yeah and so it's it all kind of all these movements sort of come together into this one, um, well, one angle. Witchcraft is just a way of like aligning with the cycles of nature. And like I said before, like harnessing some of the energy that we are, that's all around us, that we are, it's a gift to us. Um, that like Mother Earth and the cosmos, the sun and the moon, it's Like, we get to experience that, um, and you can choose to, like, listen to your, like, listen, listen to that energy, and listen to yourself, and listen to your heart, and listen to your gut, and, like, be in alignment, um, and witchcraft is just a way, it's just a tool, like, toward that, um, yeah, like, aligning with the moon cycles, aligning with the stars, like, using the gifts that plants give us to better our lives, to better other people's lives, to better this earth, so. And then also, like, I think a big part of it, for me, and I think a big part of it that's lost, um, is just ceremony and ritual and tradition. Like, we go day after day after day and everything, like, is just a blur because we don't have anything to, like, interject this timeline that we're on because we're always so busy, but then if you, if every full moon you go out and you have a ritual, every new moon you, um, like, make a list of intentions, um, or even if every, like, Sunday you sit in silence, like, that's a way to, to experience your life more deeply. Nice. So. Ow. That did hurt. Like, <laughs> that like, one has thorns. I, I, I feel I feel like for most people, they don't even spend time here anymore. I don't spend time here. Mm-hmm. I'm a city mouse. So the idea of just getting dirty mm-hmm. is also something that I have to kind of over I have to overcome and being comfortable with, you know, my mm-hmm. hands getting dirt on them. Here, here's so this Taste that. You want me to eat it? Well, just like chew on the end. Chew on the end. <laughs> you are really pushing me now. It tastes good. Wait, <laughs> just bite it? Yeah. Mm. 
You did the whole thing? Yeah. Chew on this end too. Like yeah. on the stem end. <laughs> All right, here. Oh, just tell? Mm-hmm. Okay, ooh. Minty. Yeah, it almost, it has not that's it's sassafras and has like a really unique taste to it. Isn't that a drug? Um. <laughs> oh, it's a nickname for a drug. Sa uh, sass, yeah. it, it is a nickname for a drug. I don't know, I don't know if it's related to this plant. It could easily be. But this tree has different shaped leaves. So you have this guy and you have your dinosaur paws. I don't know what they're actually called, that shape. Um, it has three different shapes. So just like different numbers of mittens. There's mittens and just typical things, but yeah. <laughs> Fungi in general, I'd say it's one of the most mysterious organisms on the planet. Like they are just wild. And it's once you like, I don't even know like one billionth of the information about fungi. And I'm like just starting to learn. Um, but it is like miraculous what fungi can do. And fungi is more closely related to humans than plants. How has working in agriculture shifted your views? You're giving me that look. What? You just know you're prodding me to open up my <laughs> my secrets. I, I, I'm much more aware of how much work j daily goes into the production of food mm -hmm. and how um, all of it is linked to the climate, the environment, the water, um, the soil the health of the animal. And also like, for me, I think a lot of people are missing a sense of place um, to some extent, especially in the United States like of America, we move around all the time and it's hard to, I, I've experienced like just finding a sense of home. Um, and I feel like something like eating local food, eating food like literally from where you're at, it helps to ground you to a sense of place, like on all levels. <laughs> My main gateway connecting, um, connecting uh, method is through people and mm. stories. And I feel like I know so many people in Athens County and the surrounding counties that are really in tune with nature and my 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 current position working with food and doing a video like this is my way of trying to bridge that gap mm -hmm. to at least have something some experience to um, share with the people that I care about that have influenced my life and influenced how I look at myself mm -hmm. and influence my sense of place and home because before them, I wouldn't didn't have any. Even though I was living in a big city like Chicago, it was empty. <laughs> and all of nature, anything that was nature related, was packaged <laughs> in parks and museums. Um, nothing really left to grow wild. And maybe even in that in the relationship sense, that the same way, you know. Wow. Like, mm -hmm. When I think about all the friends and colleagues and acquaintances I've met here, I feel like those that have remained strongest have been given the freedom to grow without any sort of um, artificial enhancement or, mm -hmm. or um, intervention the way growing in a city might do <coughs> with its prescribed time schedules and it's the difference between growing up as a salmon in the ocean, in the stream, or in a fish farm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're just being able to like walk out here and actually like take a breath means, it means a lot. You never know what you'll find. Is this a doorknob? Yeah. <laughs> you know what that means, right? 
Where are we going? What door are we walking through? There's a secret door around here. Very difficult to do and like it helps so much to like experience things with your different senses and I, one of my favorite things is just to like touch all the leaves and now like I have this literal memory of like what certain leaves like feel, feel like. like yeah and this is a beach and this always feels like I hate to like compare it to plastic but it's like kind of rigid not very soft um it like I don't want to tear it um <laughs> but and like like this hickory it's like softer um uh elm trees have like it's like rough and almost sticky it's like hard to like glide your hand along it all those um dark fairy tales mm -hmm. mother goose and grim stories they all reflect they they were all written at a time when people lived in villages and not cities mm -hmm. and the forest literally was this place of mystery unknown of boundaries breaking of magic and mm -hmm. of uncontained power yes and for people of that time it, be it became the source of all those stories but also the myths of i mean people that were outcasted would live in forests mm -hmm. naturally because they were excluded from the villages so by association and region alone you become demonized mm -hmm. or seen as an eccentric in the very least we need to go to the point where it was like that's just who people were like how you were saying like we are animals like we need to go back to that point like people tribes would just travel like move uh, migrate constantly and like it wasn't it wasn't strange to be cast off into the wilderness because that's what everyone did that's where you got your food that's where you got your medicine it's how you lived. You like knew the cycles of the plants and the weather. And I think we need to move, yeah, back even farther than the story of those being ostracized, like out of the villages and into the wilderness, and then go to a time when it was that was just how life was. Um. Yeah. Eat it. Taste it. Get to know it. Well, I have to take it out on a date first. <laughs> Roses are perfect dates. These are roses? Those are rose hips. So it's like the fruit of the rose. What does that mean? It means it has the seed in it. So you get, um, so you have your, so the cycle is like you have your buds in the spring, which turns into a flower, which produces seed. And one of my favorite things about like exploring the woods is I swear like every time I come out to the woods I see something that amazes me. What do you name me two things that you saw in the woods that amazed you? Recently. Oh my gosh! Okay, so one I saw a caterpillar. It was probably this big, like literally, and it was green and it had horns, and it was called a hickory horn devil. I found that out after the fact, but it was just wiggling along and I was like what is that and it was so big and it looks super intimidating um but I guess it doesn't even sting or anything um and then oh my gosh okay and then well and even like the super simple things like I was on a run the other day and literally at the end of my run like on the trail there was this little it was just a pawpaw and it was sitting there and I literally I felt like it was a gift I was like wow it's the end of my run like this is so perfect mm. like Thank you. And then it was, yeah, it was just food from the forest, so. There, yeah, there could be, there's a lot. Um, oh my gosh, okay, another one. This actually was like one of my favorite things recently. Um, so it's this fungi that grows on walnut shells. Mm -hmm. And it grows on some other like mediums as well, I guess. But it's called walnut mycena. And it's just this like, so the shell's like that, and then it grows, like, from the shell, and it lit literally looks like a little fairy house. So, mm. that was a cool find recently. Do you believe in fairies? Um, I think so. Do you? I am 
my my rational mind says no, but my subconscious, intuitional mind says there are still things yet discovered. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I am. Like I think I wouldn't. There's like not much I would say. I just don't believe in. Honestly, I think we have no idea. And yeah, and I'm very open to to all the magic. What is magic to you? Oh my gosh. Here's a microphone. So, <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, with everything in my being, I think, like, this is magic to me. Like, we are magic. Um, the way that everything is connected, like, it's... Like, that's magic. The way we work, like, every cell in our body, like, is communicating with one another. Like, the soil is communicating with the fungi, which is communicating with the roots which is communicating with the leaves, which is communicating with the wind. Um, and it's just like, that is magic to me. Um, and the energy that like, you can feel if, if you're listening, um, if you're being intuitive, that's magic. Um, I always, I, my dad once told me that he, like he took a science class in eighth grade and like learned so much and it was biology class. And he said it made him really sad because everything was explained logically to him and it like took away the magic from the world. Mm. And I do not believe that at all. Like the more I learn, I think the more there is to know and the more you realize like we know nothing and like the only, it always just comes back to magic because we're not gonna figure it out. So. Mm. Good answer. Thanks. Magic to me is possibility. Mm -hmm. um, in, this, <clears throat> in this day and age, peace. Like, mm. That's like that's magical now. With the microphone. Yes, ma'am. Testing, <laughs> testing. Um, magic is also uh, kindness. Yes. Um, and. <clears throat> I need some water now after that bear, dead berry. Um, <laughs> um, magic is <clears throat> magic is time mm -hmm. and beauty, just beauty. Mm -hmm. I think simple, simple, natural beauty. And I think there was a song that um, Bjork made called "Nature is Ancient." Mm -hmm. And I like that song because it reminds me of how you could, you know, when you see, when you hear about artists doing things, they, they pale in comparison to what nature's done. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's true. Even, even right down to psychedelics, you know, acid was made in a lab, mm -hmm. but then mushrooms, the real stuff. And I feel like like all art is based on nature it always comes back to that inspiration even when it comes to the individual nature of a person mm -hmm. it's from yes their mm -hmm. experience with existence mm -hmm. it's magic and what do you have any experiences you seek out that bring out magic most for you yeah i think i'm part um i think i'm partly blind Mm -hmm. I think we're all partly blind, but I really feel it. So, I know that I'm partly blind, but that's why I reach out to people so much. Mm -hmm. They see different things that I don't see. So, I feel like my existence in this world is like that of a spider. So I have a very specific view of reality with, in terms of contours and connections and webs. But sometimes I lack the color or the nuances. Mm -hmm. And so, a connection like this is my way of uh, seeing things differently mm -hmm. by connecting with other people, like mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I wear the shades. It's a bug. Yeah. I am a bug. <laughs> Get out of here. 
it's kind of like, it's it's literally this metaphor aside from being really cool but mm -hmm. it's like it's a metaphor for just when I feel like I want to see you know where the mask or the mantle that mm -hmm. I feel like empowers me or shields me mm -hmm. it's a lot of things in sunglasses it's not just for shade yeah. I like that to have something like tangible to well, other other people wear necklaces and mm -hmm. earrings like mm -hmm. you have the the beautiful feather earring and mm -hmm. you have tattoos that are very expressive i don't mm -hmm. but i like the shade mm -hmm. you take it off when i want put it back on when i, when I need it Great. you know it's optional depending on what you want to harness or or protect yeah uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and that's so like that reminds me, um, some of the flower essences and like tinctures we were talking about, mm -hmm. like that I was showing you in my room, that's exactly what they do actually. It like, it's a way to harness or like protect, like take a couple drops and it's a way to like provide yourself with what you need. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether you're seeking, yeah, like strength or softness, um, like there are different plants to help you like receive differently um and you can ask them for the help you need but yeah it's that actually is like the sunglasses like aligns perfectly with with that kind of thing disclaimer you don't need anything really you don't you need to go sit in the forest sit with a plant take time to listen um listen like people don't listen enough and that is the only thing you actually need to do you don't need to buy tinctures you don't need to buy teas you just have to walk out even to a sidewalk in a city look for a little leaf and sit with it um but beyond that there are things that that can help you different tools you can use like you said um but i would say like start with a book that you're drawn to like whether that be about ancestry, um, that'll help you connect with like the energy or the plants or like the witchiness, like whatever you're seeking. Um, just go to the library and see what calls to you and start with a book and start learning. Um, I'd say a pen or a pencil and a notebook need to go in your toolkit like to just interpret what you're experiencing, um, I think is an important part of the process. To like commit to memory what you're learning about yourself and what you're learning about your surroundings. Um, and then even beyond that, um, specifically with herbalism, I think a good place to start is like start by buying teas or going out and foraging plants and like make like the then like sustainably harvesting herbs sustainably harvesting herbs and drying them and then making teas and like connecting in that way and seeing like what it brings out in you and like taking a breath and actually like fully experiencing it um in terms of like to like really like step up your your ritual game um you can get like different candles, different colored candles mean certain things. Damn it. I think it got you. It got me. Well, on that note, everything you said was good. <laughs> but I would like to say it's important to put on some protection mm -hmm. and discern because there are a lot of people that use that sort of world and talk mm -hmm. that are actually predators. Mm hmm. And energy vampires. Good point. Mm -hmm. We all have had experiences with people that um, talk about love and connection, but they are they are in fact the most psychotic, draining, selfish, harmful people. And you see it in all corners of humanity. Of people mm -hmm. and social society, um, religious groups, cults. A book from the Nelsonville Public Library. And I will go to page... Um, 
Well, while I look for a page, what do you? What is your take on vampires? Um, the first word that comes to mind is sexy. <laughs> Um, I think they're probably also pretty tortured, though. Mm. That's why they're sexy. <laughs> um, here's, this is interesting. This is from this book, Vampires, a Mystery Library by Russell Roberts. Always quote your sources. He's, um, according to mythology, Lilith is the mother of vampires. So let's see what, how it... Hell goes. yeah. Lilith is wild feminine energy. It's like the feminine energy that is like... It's the tornado, it's the rage, it's just that like sexual desire and like lust. And like, so normally you associate those like aggressive um, parts of yourself with like your masculine energy and like the stead forwardness, but like Lilith is like the feminine fierceness. So I think she's a fucking badass. She sounds like badass. And she's like also badass. the mother of vampires who eats your children. The combination of both your knowledge and mine has made quite an offspring of a video here. <laughs> Let us hope it informs, <laughs> inspires, and educates. <laughs> he's with he's with Jonathan Harker, and um, Keanu Reeves accidentally cuts himself uh, with a razor, and then he starts going to the window, and in the window, you can hear the wolves howling, you know. Woo! And it's very, very um, unsettling. But of course, Dracula is just uh, the night, children. It sounds so beautiful. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking howl. <laughs> 